line manager trust my name is darren smith and you're at the home of sticky learning mbm let's talk about working remotely now line managers here's the challenge for you you've got to trust that your people are doing what they're supposed to be doing now there's an inherent flaw in that that they need to know what they need to be doing so what we have to do is know that trust is based on four principles. There are four parts of the trust formula. There's credibility. When I talk to you about an expert topic that you're supposed to be an expert in, do you come across well as an expert? Number one. Number two, are you reliable? If you say you're gonna get something done, do you get it done on time? That's reliability. That's the second part of the trust model. The third part is intimacy. Now that doesn't mean we need to hug, but it does mean we need to understand something beyond just our professional selves about our lives. What did you do at the weekend? What films do you like? How do you like to go and relax? Those type of things, that's intimacy. That's about opening up to each other. Now all of that can be undone by the fourth part of the trust model, which is self-orientation. Do I always talk about me? Is it all me, me, me? Is it my agenda? So line managers, we need that trust. And trust is about understanding the trust formula, particularly understanding those four parts of that trust formula and explaining. If you never come back to me by the deadlines that I've set, then you'll let me down on that third part of the trust formula, reliability. And we need to have a conversation about that and we need to try and fix it. Is it the fact my brief is not clear enough? Were the deadlines not clear enough? Are you not able to come back to me if you cannot achieve that deadline? So trust is a critical part. The other big piece we need to talk about is do you know why you are on the payroll? Simple question, very hard to answer. In my experience of time management training over the last 15 years, most people write a very long list of why they're on the payroll to deal with customers, to manage people, to launch products, to create new products, and so on and so on. But it's actually quite simple. The answer is, and for any commercial organisation, so you're not a civil servant or you don't work in the arts, it's about how much money do you make for the business and can you make dotted lines between the money you make and the bottom line. So, for instance, if you're an account manager, you have a sales target. That might be a bit easier. If you're an MPD manager, how much money do you need to make for the business? And therefore, how many launches do you need to get right? So we need to have smart targets. Why are we on the payroll? What is a smart target? Well, that's one to look up. It needs to be something that we're really clear about because if we don't have smart targets, then we end up just being busy fools stuck in our email inbox. So an example of a smart target for let's say cash flow management is I identify five opportunities each month, each one's worth more than a million pounds and I land at least 20% of those each time. That might be a smart target for a category manager. So the question is, why are you on the payroll? And if you have a smart target, because by having a smart target, everything else flows from that. Your daily to-do list, your projects, are they all about contributing to why you are on the payroll? So there might be a conversation between you and your line manager that says, why am I on the payroll? What am I here to do? What's really important to this business? What makes a, an impact on the bottom line? We need a smart target. Well worth looking up and understanding what smart is. In my experience, 99% of people have heard of it and only 1% actually do it. So there's the challenge. Take care.